coming up on this episode of Free Lunch. So, because I base a lot of things based on position. That's why you're there. Otherwise, I have to change it. Okay? (laughs) Move the piece on the chest. Let's be real. (laughs) Okay? Double jump. You're (laughs) gone. (laughs) Okay? Stop. And And I'm serious. The problem with everyday American life is really the fact that we're just disorganized. Mm -hmm. You cannot first expect others to give you what you haven't first given yourself. Then in that moment that the rest of the artist tell me none of the audience speaks English. (gasps) What's up, y'all? It's your boy Freestyle Gospel, a.k.a. The Real Free, with another episode of Free Lunch is free food for your soul, and I've snatched, kidnapped, coerced, however you want to call it. I got my amazing friend in here today with me. Look, I got, I managed to 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 coerce two of these people in here that are forever elusive and hard to get on a podcast. But, anyways, I got my wife co-hosting with me today. Give it up for the wife. Okay, okay, and, and we are tag teaming it up with the amazing fellow creative, serial author. Phenomenal. And secret creator of so much other stuff that we don't even know. Uh, look, she's got, she's going to introduce herself. Tanisha, give it up for my girl Tanisha, y'all. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. That's my friend, y'all, in real life. In real life. And in like real, in life, real life. In real life, I just, I call her my nick niche. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I got I to gotta bleep, bleep that part out, but it's right. my nick niche. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, anyway. Niche, what's up, man? What's up? I'm so happy to be here with y'all. I'm so excited you're here. You know you got to be somebody special when you just did a whole entire day of, like, moving your grandma, and then you come to the, to the studio with somebody? Listen. Listen. I'm so exhausted, but... I had to make sure I got here because I got a hold of you and your busy schedule and all that is I know you do. Uh, Super, super um, inspiring entrepreneur that's been in my life for like the last six or so years. Um, So, I mean. And then I came a snatcher. Yes, yes. (laughs) I mean, so we we know who you are, what it is a little bit you do. Could Mm -hmm. you share with our audience just. The, a formal introduction of just what do you have people call you by or, you know, how do you introduce yourself and then what it is that you do and how are you amazing? Uh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. For yes. that amazing. Yes. The amazing. Introduction. Yes. Okay. Free. We love you. So I am Tanisha Dawson. My social media goes by Tanisha Levon. Uh-huh. I am a creative oh, yes. entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I am a um, certified holistic life coach, and I have um, a bachelor's in, I actually have a master's in metaphysics, which a lot of people be like, what is metaphysics? Mm. And all that means is where um, spirituality kind of meets regular life, and we mm. put it together so it makes sense. It's all practicality. about, yes, practicality okay. and right. your inner man. All right. Then, you uh-huh. know, I am an author, of course. Yes. Um, writing is just uh, my safe haven. Mm-hmm. And um, I do podcasts. I do live videos. I have a group called The Divine Feminine. I am all about women reclaiming mm. and reigniting. Not reclaiming, because it was always ours. Mm. But okay. reigniting our femininity Okay. Um, to be, you know, um, successful in our relationships. And then, you know, I also own a brick and mortar. Yes, business, yes. You know, where I offer Which everything. I've had the pleasure of, of seeing. Woman. It's empowerment. It's totally amazing. Thank you. Uh, we definitely have to make sure you, you plug that later on in the show, sure, please. Sure. If you are in the Connecticut area or visiting uh, anytime soon, you guys got to make sure you check that spot out. But mm-hmm. you do, because I've experienced it. And yes. It's, it's yeah, amazing. Yeah. It is. It is. It's amazing. Thank but you. Being, be, being a serial creative mm. is like a very niche category of person. I, mm-hmm. I believe like, mm-hmm. you know, I think this uh, the last recent maybe decade, the idea of being an entrepreneur has been very prevalent. Yes. You know, uh, so I don't think it's it's not. Um, how do I say it's very it's very common to meet someone who also is an entrepreneur. Yes. Uh, the serial entrepreneur is the more unique thing. Mm-hmm. And it's more nuanced because already the very difficult things that come with being an entrepreneur 
being a serial entrepreneur has its own separate, entirely different sets of just headaches and uh, really self-discipline. Absolutely. Um, because I don't know if you're like me, I am so, like, there's one thing to be interested in a lot of things. Yes. So then there's the, there's the people who try to be entrepreneurs like that. Like okay. they're not necessarily particularly gifted or mm -hmm. talented in something, mm -hmm but they see an opportunity to make money with several things. Mm -hmm. So that's why they jump into several things. Mm. But then there's, I think, a even more, I call it like the beautiful nightmare of, of mm -hmm. sometimes it can feel like being plagued by actually being gifted in several things. So now it's not even about me trying to have a hand in this, this and that because I could see I could profit, yes. but having a hand in this, this and that because I'm actually amazing and all these things, and yes. it would almost be like this spiritual suicide yes. to deny one and only stick to this one over here. It's a gift and a curse. Yes. So I definitely know I wanted to, you know, just have you as another serial creative mm -hmm. brain to like just to pick on certain things. Because mm -hmm. I know your your brain is, you know, trying to navigate the same things mine is from time to time. Sure. Absolutely. Um. So, I mean, what would you say in... Being the serial entrepreneur, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what is the the hardest thing about about that? Would you say? Just I'll just speak in general like that. What's the most difficult thing in navigating your inner self in your mind when you're talented, have you know connections, networks, and so many things? And to me, the biggest issue is there's not enough time in the day. Mm. It's, yes, it, you, you're going to sacrifice something, whether it is sleep. Um, um, and you're actually like married with kids like you have. Right. A right. So <laughs> you're going something is always going to feel like it's on the back burner. It's like, you know, when you, you're cooking a full course meal and you got like 20 people coming over. Right. And you got the pots in the back. You got this. You got something in the oven. You got something in the air fryer. And you're trying to navigate <laughs> which ones to come out. Ding. Okay, mm -hmm. that one's ready. That one's ready. Yes. This one's still cooking. This one has about 20 more minutes. Yeah. And it's no different than trying to, like, navigate a huge dinner. But at the same time, mm. what goes on simmer and what's boiling is what you have to discern. Because, ooh, child. I yeah, love that. You see what I'm saying? That sounds like a word right there. <laughs> huh? a word. It's okay. like navigating... Not being the serial entrepreneur, mm -hmm. at least a successful one, mm -hmm. is like navigating a big dinner. Mm -hmm. Could could you break that down a little bit? Listen, the so one you mentioned you got the you got you got the stove. Yes. Top. Yes. You got the oven. Yes. You got the air fryer. Maybe. Yes. You got the boiler, the slow cooker. Maybe. Cro crock pot. Okay. You know something. I'm in not. The crock pot. I'm not the cook. Period. So I need I need the ladies here. My my co-hosts, Isis, the love, and, and yes. Tanisha. I need. Break that down so people can see the parallels. So, so they can see this is actually doable. It's doable. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. being a serial entrepreneur, if if you've been gifted and cursed in that way, mm -hmm. this is doable. It's doable. Let's see how we can all chew on this and watch this parallel. Because I, I love it. It's just that I know I'm not an actual cook in mm -hmm. the kitchen, but I've seen my wife. I've seen other cooks mm -hmm. navigate these several things happening and brewing at the same time in the kitchen. Yes. Like how you need to as an entrepreneur. Right. So let's say um, I'm in the kitchen. Isis is in the kitchen. You're cooking dinner for a lot of people. There are a lot of dishes on the table. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of dishes that have to make it to the table and they have to kind of make it to the table at the same at time. At the same time. Yep. Right. So the idea is, okay, let me give you an example. I went out to eat last night. I went to a place called Han Pot. Mm -hmm. You cook on the table your own food in a pot. There are Ooh. certain foods that take longer to cook than others and certain ones that take 30 seconds to cook. You have wow. to put the ones that cook longer in, in first. first. Yep. Got you. Then you have to take the ones that take 10, 30 seconds and cook those last. So it's kind of the same concept. You just have to be able to discern the pots that are at your table, mm -hmm. the pots that are on your stove, which ones are going to take you longer? Which ones do you have a natural talent at that you could do in your sleep? 
Wow. Yeah. Okay. Which ones take a little more effort, like yeah. maybe research time or okay. prayer time, right. or meditation time? What's the preparation yes. in that What's meal? the preparation mm-hmm. for okay. that part? Because some things you could just turn the boil, the water on, boil it, right. throw some, some things you need to actually prepare, season, things got to marinate, it might got to sit so, in the refrigerator. So, okay. So, so, so it's all about what can make the table. Mm-hmm. Right. And in, and in succession. Mm-hmm. What's what can make the table quickly? Mm-hmm. What might take time? Yes. And and once you kind of know that piece, you kind of almost like work backwards. Like I know this to make the table. This will have to cook longer. So the things that can maybe cook uh, quickly, I could I can maybe set that off to the side. To the side. Mm-hmm. But something that's going to take a longer time before it can make the table. Mm-hmm. That maybe has to begin early on mm-hmm. with creating a foundation mm-hmm. as that serial creative. Because I think a lot of people, at least, you know, I've, I've, me being a married man, I have a lot of married couple friends mm-hmm. who are also entrepreneurs and they, you know, have this kind of like thing with their significant other where because their um, entrepreneur spirit or whatever is in several things, mm-hmm. they feel like because it's conflicting with their family scheduling and okay finding room to fit all these things that they have to abandon Mm -hmm. one of the gifts or one of the, and from what I'm hearing you say, like really make this thing kind of like plain and practical Mm -hmm. terms. When you think of it like that kitchen Mm -hmm. and several things cooking at once, it's not that you have to abandon one of the pots or the things on the dish. You simply need to know when to engage, when to begin, when to start on which one. When to now, turn the fire you clearly, down on which you one. You clearly are not going to grow eight arms and be able to simultaneously be doing all the right. at, at one time. Right. But if you can strategically, methodically approach the kitchen, approach mm-hmm. your entrepreneur gifts and, uh, uh, you know, entrep- uh, opportunities that are out there, mm-hmm. um, not only is it going to make for a successful venture mm-hmm. across all boards, but it's going to allow you to be successful at your family life. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, Absolutely. Nobody wants to, like, exchange one for the other. Yeah. No. We want to be able to have them both. Right. And that's we, almost like the fail safe because you also got to think when you're cooking that many meals at one time, plan for a, a backup because yes. something just might burn, something might spill, something yes. might, and now you have to go, all Re- right, what can I substitute? Mm-hmm. What can I use? This is trash. I got to get something else out here. Absolutely. I didn't even think of that. And yeah. then you, you have wow. to find the, so here's the thing. The problem with everyday American life is really the fact that we're just disorganized. Mm-hmm. Yes. Our mm. lives lack yes. proper organization. Absolutely. Yes. So you got to find the pockets of where you can add these things. Like I don't take time. So for instance, if you have small children, I think that's the most sacrifice you're going to be making if yeah, your children yeah. are really small yes. because they just they deserve a different letter, level of dedication, right? Yes. But as your children get older, There are projects and things that you can begin to delegate to them so that, like, for instance, my son is nine. Now we're getting him into music. So now mommy doesn't have to teach him music. I know nothing about music, but guess what? Older (laughs) brother Arius does. Yes. So now, Arius, this is your job. Your job is to mentor and cultivate your little brother into learning how yes. to mix music. Yes. So now, Arius is home with Terrellius right now, and I'm here. Mm. And I don't have a smidge of guilt because yes. they're busy. That's right. Yes. You get what I'm saying? That's right. Yes. Now, if I felt like, oh, I didn't get dinner on the stove. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. And, yeah. and Terrellius is probably watching TV. Yes. I would feel yes. like me doing something that's for me. Yeah, I, I would have that level of yes. guilt. Yes. Right. So it's all about learning what to maneuver when, how to delegate, when yeah. to delegate, when to put things to the side, when to pick things up. Yes. Um, I find pockets to talk to my older children. Um, I have boys. They're in and out of the house. But when yeah. the pockets are there, I take utilization yeah, yeah. of the pockets. What are what are uh, real quick? What are, what are the, the ages of your kids? So I have a 22 year old. I have a 18 year old and a nine year old. Where okay. when yeah. you look at her, where? <laughs> yeah, that part, guys. Twenty two. Uh, where? Twenty two. Exactly. Yes. yes. Um, How dare? So, <laughs> you know, for I find that so past once you can you know get to a place at least, uh, which is a, a a difficult difficult in it in and of itself, mm. uh, just navigating being an entrepreneur. Period. You, mm. you know, so put aside if you're a serial serial entrepreneur. Okay, that aside, just mm-hmm. trying to be an entrepreneur mm-hmm. um, and balance 
work life um, is difficult. That is that difficulty aside, if you can get some measure of balance with your home and the work, you know, whether it's your nine to five mm-hmm. or being an entrepreneur, if you can get some measure of balance there, the next hurdle becomes for at least the creative that I am and that um, that you are. I don't know if the, this is a hurdle for you, but mm-hmm. the next hurdle I've at least in the past at some point has had to come across as a creative is um, this idea of trying to garner support. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously that happens from like the inside out. Mm -hmm. So I think we look at to, as creators, we, we look to find that support um, from the closest people and closest thing to us first. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's natural. Mm -hmm. Um, So if if you're married, you know, you look to garner that from your spouse. Mm -hmm. Um, If you have children, you, you know, maybe your children next. And then, um, you know, extended family and so on, friends, close friends. Um, but I think, uh, we, like we've all heard someone, whether it's been our own experience or another creative say, you know, really just finding support in grassroots stages of your Mm -hmm. thing and your entrepreneurial endeavor can really be difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, what have you learned to be I'll ask you the question, mm-hmm. but I'll answer first for me. So it give you a little time to ponder, to, to ponder a bit. Mm-hmm. What do you, what would you say has been the best sobering thought and mindset to keep while looking to, you know, have support for your endeavors and, and, and so on and so forth. So for me, the, the biggest thing that I've discovered to be the most like sobering, you know, mindset or thought. And when I say sobering, I really mean like it's the thing to give me peace of mind yes. along my creative journey. The, the best thing for me has been realizing that all things should flow from the inside out. Yep. So if I feel passionate about something, I feel this particular thing is my calling. This is my gift. This is what God has created me to do and be. You first, I believe, have to be so grounded and rooted in that on the inside. You believe that through and through. Yes. And why that's important is because I think some people try to do it in reverse. They try to garner the support on the outside first and somehow leverage that or in hopes they'll be able to leverage that. And then the, all the support that they get from the outside will suddenly make them more believe it on the inside of them. Yes. And then what you'll find in in my experience, and I think many of you listening will agree, is you realize you don't get all the support and overwhelming, you know, uh, raw and cheering that you would have wanted. And then, of course, what you thought was your life's purpose and whatever is a quickly dwindling flame on the inside of you. (laughs) Now, when you think from the inside out, that flame has been lit a fire on the inside. Mm -hmm. That's the cell fail safe is that now all of us, even when we want support, that's a normal thing to want support on the outside. But guess what? If I don't get it, the flame doesn't go out because I I, I didn't rely on the people on the outside to light the flame. Right. They had nothing to do with the flame. Right. The flame happened in in the quiet place. Mm Mm-hmm alone on the inside of me between me and God. It was, it was, it was our business. Mm -hmm. When we went live on social media, you, you just became a privileged person to view what, what's me and God's business. Right. It's gotta be from the inside out. That's been my sobering thought. What has been amongst probably many, a sobering (laughs) thought for you in that. So, so I have a few sobering thoughts. Mm -hmm. One of them is exactly what you just said. Um, you cannot first expect others to give you what you haven't first given yourself. So if Mm. I am looking outside of me for something that I have not given myself, if I haven't given myself support, if I haven't given myself investment, Mm. if I haven't given myself time, then I can't expect others to give me any of those things either. Wow. Yes. I love it. Secondly, the most sobering thought for me is purpose. And the reason that that's my most sobering thought is because I don't do it for money or support. Mm. I do it for love. 
And that's the difference. So my father once taught me when I was very young, um, and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to be when I grow up. <laughs> you know, my father and my mother said, this was their words. They said, do what you would do if you wouldn't didn't get paid for it. What mm. if you if money was not an option and you did not need that to pay your bills, mm -hmm. do that. Because that's where your genuine love is. That's going to be where your power is. That's going to be yes. where your gift is. And that's going to be what draws people to yes. you. Mm. So when I It'll do make a way for everything else. So now, lucky me, like I literally feel so blessed in my life because there is not one thing in my life that I do that I don't 100% love and joy doing. So yes. even though I have a job, mm -hmm. I have a nine to five and I don't, it's not a nine to five, but I don't even yeah. look at it as a nine to five because I love going there so much that if I became a millionaire, I would invest I'd, there. I'd still have some connection there. I'm going to still be here. Yes. So yes. it doesn't matter. And my, me writing my books, I'm going to write them to help the people. I would give them away for free if you needed them. You know, side note, that reminds me of uh, a moment in time um, where my, me, my sister and our mother, uh, my mom had moved us out of Connecticut mm -hmm. for like my high school years, yes. uh, to Virginia beach. Ooh, me too. Um, uh, but you know, we had no family down there. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, she just kind of up, took her kids and moved away as far from Connecticut. you know, I guess as she could. Um, and we ended up in Norfolk, Virginia mm -hmm. uh, at a homeless shelter, you know, because like my mom didn't have a job set up, like apartment, Nothing. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And at the homeless shelter, everybody knows the very, very infamous producer, Timberland. Mm -hmm. His mother worked at the homeless shelter. Mm -hmm. And it, it reminded me of what you just said. Even if you were a millionaire or had, it, you'd still be at that place where you work because right. you are passionate about it. Right. And as I got older, you know, I was like a young kid then, so it didn't really have register, any, register yeah. how impactful that was yeah but when, as i got older i'm like timberland's mother like right don't feel she, bad for her this is she what could she just, wants to do i'm like she could right. just be sitting on her behind so we're just living a good life but to her she is living the good right. she's passionate about helping disenfranchised people yes um and like that's this like an amazing thing to be to live each day free like that yes i am i'm not i don't feel bound by you know you know uh or frustrated with how much money, what's my wage I'm making because I do this for nothing. Right. I love this. Right. Obviously, the sweet spot we all hope for is that we can uh, have, you know, maximum gains and maximum happiness. Yes. Right. But again, I believe just like I, I, I think you agree with me. Mm -hmm. Achieving those two things happens from the inside out. Mm -hmm. You you achieve internal Maximum health, maximum happiness, yep. maximum well-being on the inside. Yep. And the maximum gains, all that stuff on the outside that we are so consumed with and frustrated with happens naturally. Yes. Um, so, wow, that, that, was, that was very, very dope. Yes. That's very powerful. And that's you can't focus. That's, that's, see, that's the hit. That's the part that people don't realize. Focus on the love, the happiness, the purpose, and the fire on the inside of you. And the gains, you're going to wake up one day and realize, like, I have an overabundance and I didn't see it coming. Didn't see I coming. have this and I, how did this happen? And you really can't even back step, backtrack the steps. You're like, yes. you just wake up one day and now everything is in a flow. Yeah. Money mm -hmm. is coming in effortlessly. People are supporting yes. you effortlessly. And... That's what you really want. You don't want to ever try to yes. force support. Yeah. That and I think like, that yeah. that effortless thing is so true because again, it's one of it's it's that's what I think is always the great thing about um, memoir type books. Yes. Um, at least ones like like Kevin Hart has a book about like Steve yes. Harvey, like these yes. great people who've written books about kind of like their journey and how yep. they went from here to there. Yeah. You can see kind of like a practical way of of gems like what you're sharing because mm -hmm. it's like great and poetic to like hear that right mm -hmm. and then you know kind of be conflicted or you know i don't know not be able to see where that's like played out in your life yet 
Right. But then when you can have the benefit of at least reading it from someone and I've had, you know, I've been blessed to be able to experience it for myself. So again, like a book does, um, you know, again, I'll share that next piece with you guys. Like I never tried to like go on this journey as like a, a lyricist, a poet and say, you know, um, how can I, you know, book me, um, like I need to, I need to get in France or I want to get on Switzerland state. Like that was never my thought. Right. But how I just appeared and showed up there one day is from a series of events that I can only loosely backtrack, like you said, mm -hmm. but I can remember just being invited to a Georgia event mm -hmm. and putting my everything in that moment. Right. Seizing the moment in that stage there. That's right. And then someone in the Georgia audience yep. was from England yep. and invited me in the lobby yep. to come to England the right. next month. Right. So I had no plans to ever go to England, but that happened. Mm -hmm. And then while I was killing it and seizing the moment in England, someone in that audience was going on a tour the next year yep. to Switzerland, uh, you know, France, Belgium, mm -hmm. Germany. And they said, hey, could you come on our tour with us next year to these? Right, right. And then next year I find myself in Switzerland, France, do, because right. I'm simply flowing. I'm I'm fl I'm not obsessing over tomorrow. And like these are like things that I love that are, you know, um, really like put in layman's terms, like biblical or scriptural things, things yes. that like people like over complicate or right. make super religious. But you can right. see it's like it's fruit in like a, a practical sense. Like, right. Like this is why the Bible tells us things like, Hey, don't worry about tomorrow. tomorrow. Mm -mm. Today. Live today. It's enough in today Keep your best for you to be today. focused on. Right. <laughs> Tomorrow's going to take care of itself. Yes, it will. Automatically. Right. Super, super, super dope. Yes, absolutely. Now when we're now, so like my next thing is with the, we, we get from the like inside out and, when we get to the point, at least where, for whatever it is, I, you know, I think for the very mature creative or just, you know, if you're not even a creative, the very mature individual who's like really um, adopted these, you know, belief systems of, of really uh, moving from the inside out. Mm -hmm. um, individuals who's, who've adopted those type of principles, I don't think tend to deal with this particular nuance that I'm getting ready to discuss much, but mm -hmm. at times we do. Um, but we can't we can't kind of shake always this just natural human desire for us to like have like, again, this support outside of us. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fair. You know, I don't want to come off to the listeners or audience like, you know, we're this so high above human experience. We're like, you know, hey, I don't I don't care. It doesn't Jesus. affect me. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't affect me if nobody's support. like, <laughs> it, no, right. it does. It does affect us. Right. We're not saying that. We're simply no. saying there's a healthy way to, to navigate, push and pass that and still be successful. Absolutely. You're, because here's the thing, and I'm sorry to, mm -hmm. to cut you off, but you're when you are 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 almost wanting to force support. Right. So you you start a business, you have a brick and mortar, you're a writer, you're a poet, you're a musician, whatever it is. The weird part about it is that the people that you would expect to support you are usually not them anyway. Right. That's the sad Or part. not the supporters yeah, yeah. in the way that you would, would have, have expected, expected them yeah. to. Right. Mm -hmm. So you end up kind of having like this epiphany at some point, like my support is not going to come from them. You think it's going to yeah. come from your inner circle yeah. and it usually doesn't. It's no different. I hate to always use biblical terms, but I mean, yeah, again, yeah, yeah, I yeah. know my Bible. Yeah, I yeah. love my Bible, but Jesus couldn't do works in his own hometown. Yeah, so yeah. no one respected his giftings. No one yeah, respected yeah. what he was able to do. So I take that uh, again with myself. Like, listen, as it's grateful to have friends like you that actually respect the yeah. gifts or respect the gift in you, respect the gift in you. But that's rare and it's few and far yeah. in between. So usually it's the people not in your inner courts, but it's your far outer court yeah, yeah. that ends up coming and, and giving that and I, support. And I think like, I think the, a lot, well, you know, in part at least, I think the reason that is, is I think it's kind of like God's way of showing us his, his presence mm -hmm. and not seeing ourselves or getting, getting the, 
the thing that just is naturally worked into how he's created the universe to work, mm -hmm. not getting that confused with something that like we did other than just be committed and true to ourself. And that right. thing that is between him and you yep. on the inside. So mm -hmm. it doesn't come from the expected place you would think. Right. You know, uh, that, that if it came from like a family or a friendship, right, that would have some type of something to do with your influence on them. Right. Right. But it comes from a totally different place. And um, when it comes from a different place, I think it makes us, it forces us to see God's hand. Mm -hmm. And that like, like, listen, sure. the system I've created here on this planet, in this universe, it works. See how that support just you, you'd stay committed to what me and you discussed in private. Right. You did what I told you to do. Here's that. And look at how the rest just comes. comes. And Close. that's what that's what I've experienced so many times. And, I, and that's why I'm so grateful for like those different experiences outside of like our, the homeland where we're right. born right. in other countries. It's right. because that's where in my mind, it's like that's that's the place where it's for God to shine the most right. to show you like, look at look at this. Look at this. Right. Like. I remember the first time I, I think I've shared this before that I uh, the first like venue stop uh, when we were touring in France. And if you've ever been a person like to see me on the mic or at an event and do my spoken word thing or whatever, I am a very fast lyricist. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're preparing up in a, a, a upper room um, before we come down to like the stage. And it's not until then in that moment that the rest of the artists tell me none of the audience speaks English. <gasps> and I'm looking at, I'm like, uh, guys, that might've been something worth letting me know in advance. Right. And to their mind, you know, they know that I'm a, a poet. So they're kind of thinking, well, no, it's free. It's okay. We have a interpreter. They think I'm that poet. Like Not this fast. the slow, really, <laughs> And so I told you won't get this challenge today. So, so I looked at the interpreter and I'm like, no yeah. offense, dude, but like the way I do what I do, my thing, it's really, really fast. I, it's not even worth you even attempting. So I said, so I said, I said, hey, you know, you can sit off to the side. I'm here now. We're here. You know, we might as well, you know, do what it do. And I had never been more nervous in my life because in my brain, I'm just thinking I'm going to get on this microphone. I'm going to do my thing and it's going to just be crickets. Like the room is going to just be looking at me like, what the heck is he talking about? So long story short, I get on the microphone. I do my thing. Everybody in the room is applauding, clapping. And this also just showed me kind of like the, the, the spirit that both music and poetry brings. Mm -hmm. After I left the stage, I go to my, my merch table, like I do at any event I go to, even here in the States. And I had so many people come to my merch table in their best broken English they could muster up, shaking my hand, telling me how great they loved the right, piece. Right. And they even confessed, admitting I couldn't keep up and know what you were saying, but I felt so good mm -hmm. listening to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's crazy. Like these. Right. These people felt something, not even having a clue of right. half of what it is that I'm saying. Right. And so, you know, it, it, it just, again, that thing where when the support doesn't come from your usual expected place, man, it's just, it's even greater. But it's even greater. So we have, um, we have the thing where we get the support from unusual space. Mm -hmm. But I think when, like, I hear, I talk to some of my other creative friends, some of the things that we, deem or what we would call support i think are unrealistic mm -hmm. to like expect from people okay so one of those things i was talking to one of my friends and it was like uh this idea of having everybody like they know or you know they're close mainly like their significant other and um their close friends be able to like show up to you know all the events or any events that they have like coming up right and so, you know, one, I had to just like explain to him, like, well, first off, there's different ways to social support, right? Right. And then, you know, to kind of like expect that everything you put out or, you know, distribute, uh, that people are going to be A, in a position to, you know, if it's an event, be there or right. B, in a position to, 
you know, patronize you or like, you know, whatever it is, if it's a financial thing that, you know, uh, you're selling, that's unrealistic. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's that's important to for you to know yourself if you're the entrepreneur with mm-hmm. the single business, if you're the serial creative is what are my healthy expectations when it comes to support? What what's what's a healthy thing to expect or what's this, what's a healthy definition for right. me to have of support? Right. And for me, many times, um, like, you know, my wife, our, our, our co-host here, the lovely Isis, I tell my wife a lot of times, for me, support is just letting me. I need you to let me. Mm-hmm. So essentially. Because you got a lot going wh- on and I can't always be there. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, without without it sounding rude, just for lack of a better phrase, I essentially need you to, it, and this is only kind of something that would pertain to like my wife or my, my inside my home. Mm-hmm. Um, I need you to just simply move aside out right. of my way. Like, right. like let me, right. that's support right. for me. Mm-hmm. Um, past my house when it comes to my friends, you know, such as, you know, yourself, mm-hmm. uh, other friends of mine. Um, support is simply like encouraging me from the sideline or cheering me on. Mm-hmm. I, I don't need you to ever patronize me. Mm-hmm. I don't need you to, you know, buy those things are good. I don't mm-hmm. need you to buy what I'm selling. I don't need you to attend my event. Right. Uh, you know, and my best friends, like, you know, my best man at my wedding, uh, who, you know, um, you know, my, my wife, these are people who've not been to, you know, many events I've done, mm-hmm. haven't, you know, necessarily bought, you know, things I've sold, right. but they cheer me on. They support me when I bring them one of my crazy outlandish ideas and they're like, and I'm expecting them to look at me and be like, that's crazy. But they look back at me and shock me. And they're like, bro, do it. Right. That's, that's what's up. <laughs> the healthy definition of support for me. Yes. Yes. Do you have that same definition of like, When it comes to you? Yeah. I mean, I don't. So again, like, and, and, and this is what I've noticed with a lot of entrepreneurs, everybody views support differently because everybody's different. So, you know, for you and your, your support being like, just let me Mm -hmm. just create, open the path. That's all I need. Yes. You know, um, for me, um, support just looks like just being there for me. You know, like it doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to be like if it's. Well, then that that could be very like, you know, uh, relative. So like explain that what's being there. For yes. You. Okay. So so it's different, though, depending on your position in my life. OK. Yep. So because I base think a lot of things yes. based on position. That's why you're Absolutely. there. Otherwise, I have to change it. OK. <laughs> Move let's, the piece. On let's the be real. <laughs> OK. Double jump. You're <laughs> gone. OK. <laughs> And I'm, and I'm serious. <laughs> Position <So>? open. <laughs> Position open. ISIS, Yo. sit here. Put it in the application. The double Listen, checkers, I've, please. I've, I've only been around for a couple of years, and I'm like, where are these? Oh. Right. Where they at? Said the checker piece. Jump, jump. Well, I'm going to sit Kidney. in this. Let me, let me sit in this Kidney. warm seat right here. Okay, so explain that. Explain that. So, again, it's different based on position. So, if I, if I have... A, and I only expect what I give out. I do fair. not. I am not mm. a fan of hypocrisy. No. So if if some if it's something that I know I cannot do practically, it's very much good for me to be aware that others can't do that practically mm. all the time either. So do I expect you to be at every event? No, because that's impractical in. Everybody has lives, and unless you're narcissistic, you can't think everybody's lives revive, revolves around what you have going on. But if you're my spouse, support from my spouse is just when I give you an idea, pour back in, help me exp- expound that idea. Because if I'm going to my spouse for the idea, one, I'm looking for support, but two, I might also be looking for a, a building bridge to the criticism puzzle. At all? Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I'm waiting for constructive criticism, mm-hmm. things that I could be doing better or mm-hmm. worse. Listen, it, low key, I was talking to my husband the other day and I was saying, and, and in, this one was like a, ink, but mm-hmm. I said, um, I'm writing my book, right? And I have been, when I start writing, I can't stop because 
it's weird. I told my husband that I feel like my computer got a spirit on it. <laughs> and I said this because <laughs> when I sit down to my computer, like I can't write in a book. I have to type it because okay. I type faster than I write. And as I'm typing, the, the, the thoughts just keep flowing and they flow and they flow and then I go back. So sometimes when I read my own books, I it doesn't sound like me. I don't yes. remember yes. writing Where it. Where that came from. The I was just getting downloaded. It, it, was, it was a download. That's it. Yes. So I was writing, and I've been, I've been off my schedule a little bit, and I said, oh, my God, I I can't sleep at night. Like, I, I haven't really been sleeping, da 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 And he said, um, if I may, maybe you should stop saying I can't sleep. And I was like, uh, mm. okay, right. And he's like, so let me ask you this. Are you tired the next day where the lack of sleep is impeding mm-hmm. something that you need to do? And I thought about it. I said, um, no, no, I, I wasn't that tired the next day. Mm-hmm. And he said, so then maybe that's God's way of giving you more time that you don't need the sleep. He said, or maybe you could create like a ritual at night that tells your body that this is what I do before I go to sleep, so it will train you to go mm, to sleep. I like that. All I said was, thank you for That's that. fire. Like, because it was something that I hadn't thought of. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I'm like, one, you're right. You know, I believe that. So all he did was keep me in remembrance of what it is that I already believe myself. Right. Yes. So it could be constructive criticism. It could be expounding upon an idea. I'm always going to my husband as a sounding board. If I have an idea, I'm going to him. I'm letting him crunch the numbers to see if this is even worth my while to do. Like he's he's better at certain things than I am. I might have the idea, but he has the practical way of how to get there. Now, if you're my friend. Friends can't always be at every event. But it yes. takes nothing to me. Now, this is my personal opinion. It takes yes. nothing to me to share it. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Because it's free. It's free. It's it free. Didn't, free. It didn't cost you anything but a click that you're already on. And we share Fra- Fractional we, seconds. We, we share in all these famous people who are not uh, thinking uh, about us. Okay. Stuff. So if I see <laughs> it says free lunch, Spotify, yeah. podcast. Click. I know I'm going to listen to it later, but I'm going to share it now. Because... That cost me nothing. Right. I was yeah. already up there. Right. Yes. So if ISIS is showing a candle, if yeah. I can't buy the candle today, who's to say the thousand people on my page can't buy a candle? Right. Yes. Or was just thinking about a candle. Yes. It's actually selfish of me. Right. Yes. To not share what my friends or fellow mm. acquaintances are doing just because it might not benefit me at the moment yes. doesn't mean it's not gonna benefit who I associate with or my network. Yes. Right. So mm. that I would expect my friends to at least do that. Yes. yes. Um, and really that's it. Like, honestly, I don't have many expectations of support just because people support at the level that they're able to. Yes. Sometimes I think we mentioned earlier, you can have people that don't support because they're not really in support. Mm-hmm. I mean, To me, things are broken down very simply and practically. If you're not showing support, maybe you don't really support it. It's really that simple. Yeah. I don't support what you're doing. Yeah. I'm not happy about what you're doing. Yeah. I don't like what you're doing. Yeah. But considering that, I mean, maybe they they don't support. I mean, I guess the next question should be, again, and and back to what it piggybacked on what we said before, working Mm -hmm. from the inside out. Mm Mm-hmm. If you get the epiphany that maybe they just don't support it, to what extent should you let that bother you? And that's at the end of the day what I think you every yeah. we all have to ask ourselves that. We do. And what I what I hope those of you listening is that's what you, you know, you, whether you get that epiphany or it comes across or not, yeah. whenever you do, realizing to what extent does it matter in the grand scheme of things or you let it matter right. and this is again being also very realistic um and and you know humbled understanding yes. that we're we're human absolutely the, we, we desire all these things these are good things to have but if you don't have them 
having worked in as kind of our internal fail safe or mm-hmm. our mm-hmm. driven, passionate fail safe that mm-hmm. listen, if we simply rely on these things though, from these people to be the only thing that we fuel this car with, right. when that fuel runs dry and is gone, then what? Then our car stops. Right. But if we can find something on the inside, something going. attached to the infinite to fuel the vehicle, Absolutely. the vehicle is never stopping. It's never gonna stop. No matter what's happening outside of this vehicle. Exactly. Exactly. That's and the- I also believe that based on you doing it from that inner fire, based on you doing it from that conversation yeah. you had, who is supposed to be drawn to you will be drawn to you. So that's how you can take away the level of offense or being bothered because who is supposed to be drawn to you will be. So if you're not, I can take it under account that maybe this isn't for you right now. Everyone's not your audience. It's not your audience. And Mm. if I'm trying to teach to somebody and it's not my audience, we're in here and the people I'm trying to reach are out there. Wow. Somebody's in the wrong place. place. Yeah. Dang. Somebody's I don't out think of I've, order. I don't think I've heard it that worded that way. Y'all like tripping me up. Yeah, y'all just see, you see how they like breeze over these gyms too? <laughs> yeah, maybe it's not your audience. Yeah, going on to the next point. <laughs> and I'm like, hold on, wait. Re- 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 rewind the tape. Maybe it's not your audience. It's not yeah. your audience. Like, because Come on here. You you it seems sensible to me if you're in front of your audience, emphasis on your if it's your audience, everything you're looking to garner from that experience happens naturally because it's your audience. Right. right. You want the support of them or whatever the the, the applause, whatever. Mm-hmm. And because it's your audience, they want what you have also. Right. But you put the, you know, uh, you put the comedian in front of the you know college university lecture class like okay they're looking for the professor right not the comedian (laughs) right Right. like so (laughs) many maybe some of us are running into the problem as entrepreneurs and Mm. in this way of looking for support or is because we're simply in front of the wrong audience exactly or we're in front of the right audience but guess what wrong content we're, we're here in front of the right audience but our eyes are fixed over here right right and all the all the potential support is over here, though, where, where yeah. you're not even looking to or giving credence to. And that's what I think mm-hmm. I've even had to swallow that recently. Like I had to really wrestle with myself uh, with like some recent thoughts mm-hmm. in like the past probably just over the past year of like, you know, dang, like, you know, you know, it's, it's I feel like, you know, I don't got like no support around here or people are not supporting like me like I should. And then like I felt like God like smacked me upside the head and was like, what are you talking about? And then like just pointed and brought to my remembrance this person, this person. This, and what what the common thing, all these people in places where he showed me and reminded me I got overwhelming support, the common thing they all had in common was they weren't the usual places and people. Mm-hmm. Right. They weren't part of my inner circle. Mm-hmm. Right. And so then I had to swallow the next revelation. Okay. Which is it's not that you're upset you don't have support. You're upset and in your feelings because you don't have support from a specific place yeah, or right. person. Right. Yes. So you really going to get caught up in salty, and salty because yeah. you don't got it from over here, a but whole... completely ignore and be ungrateful for where oh, you got here. it times 10 over here. Right. So I had to be like, you know what? I'm bugging. Yeah. I actually let me change what I'm saying out of my mouth. Yes. I actually have amazing support. Absolutely. And so let me not be bothered by because I didn't get it from this click or this group of people, or this person that I want it from. Listen, it will turn you into a whole tortilla chip, okay? If you (laughs) let it get to you, you will be salty for days. Yes. And again, ISIS said it, it might, it doesn't, your inner circle is not always your audience. Also, your inner circle sometimes is not even still supposed to be your inner circle. That part, I just... Oh, snap, she almost made me spit my juice out. You... You're just afraid to let them go. What? Oh, maybe God is telling I don't, you people, to purge. Purge. Okay. Yo, people don't want to hear that. Purge your matrix. Niece, you're right. bugging right now. People don't want to hear that. Nobody don't want to hear that, but it's it, because, you your know Your inner what? circle might not, it's not supposed to be your inner circle? At, days in, no. people say this all the time, there's levels to this, but with every level, everybody's not supposed to come. 
Right. Levels happen. Okay, we all played video games growing up. Levels happen when you pass, you beat the dragon or whatever. Yes. You pass it. Da -da 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 -da. Next level, right? Um, all the millennials who grew up playing Mario. Yes. <laughs> yes, right? Definitely uh -huh. heard that flag sound going yeah, up. There, yes. You know, that uh -huh. was it. That was it right there. So now I slayed the dragon. You didn't. Whatever your dragon was, but right. you didn't slay it. So I'm on 2.2, .2 and you're still on 1.2, but I'm still back wow. here because I'm like, no, this is my best friend. Right. Wow. Yeah. I don't want to elevate without yeah. her. I don't want to leave her because. Oh, snap. Yeah. Why? And then you have that best friend that's looking at you like, wow, Why so you, you really you're just, just. trying to be over there and I'm wow. over here. Like, wow. you're better than me. It's, it's crazy because I, you know, listen, um, no shade. Okay. My sister's going to watch this, but I'll be talking about her all the time. I don't have to check in first. So my little sister, right, we have a brick and mortar. And you some, see how she got to put the little in there? Yeah. Just, you just said, so y'all know, I'm the, I'm, I'm the big so sister. My little sister. I'm the big sister, so y'all know. Just so y'all know, because okay. then when the flogging happens, people don't think that I'm just getting on her. I'm really like an aunt, okay? It's like, not <laughs> like I'm just going sick, right? So sometimes, you know, she'll be like, uh-uh, because... I don't understand yeah. why this one yeah, goes yeah. there when they could just be coming to us because that's like yes. our family. Yes. And I always have to say, here's the thing. Again, Jesus couldn't do works in yes. his own hometown. Yes, yes. Right. So it's sometimes it's your family and your closest friends that don't even believe in your abilities or potential. Yes. They don't even see your gifts because they take advantage of your gifts. They have been around your gift for so long that it has become normal yes. to them. So now the light yes. that everybody else sees and is like, oh, my God, they're just like that. Right. I've been around that. I see that it takes special people to recognize the giftings in the people that they've been around for a long period of time. You ever see how the pastor come in and they talk and then when it's a guest speaker, it's another offer and that offer and be overflowing because for the guests. The, right. the, the amens be on fleet. For real. Listen. It's, it's two baskets that, for the visiting it's pastor. Two, it's two. We got to do another one. <laughs> it's just like, wow. Again? Wow. Nah, he's not even my pastor. He's though. not even my pastor. Wow. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so yeah. The fresh, the fresh, the fresh word be coming the from the word. visiting. Okay. The, so it, The new wine. <laughs> The pastor looking like, so y'all drenched or something? Am I not fulfilling <laughs> right. your spiritual yeah. needs? This is what's going on here? Just, I'm just wow. asking. So it, it is hard to do works exceedingly, abundantly above all works yeah. around the people that take your, take your gift for granted. Yeah. I was yeah. telling my um, husband last week, I, I was telling him one of my books. There's a book that I wrote. It was called The Queen Code. That book is bought every single month by a college institution um, in droves. Like they buy boxes full. So whatever they're doing, they're using it for a curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I have family that haven't even read my books. Wow. Now for me, if Isis wrote a book, I'm going to be the first person to buy it and I'm going to read it so that I can give her feedback and be like, ah, girl, this is what it did for me. Right. But... Some people, they just like, oh, you wrote a book? I mean, uh, right? it was good. And then wow. you have other people that are like, oh, my God, listen, yes, this yes. changed my life. This particular yeah, yeah, part yeah, yeah, right yeah. here was exactly what I needed. So after a while, like you said, it comes a point to where you're kind of like, the support I'm supposed to get, I'm getting. Right. And that's that. Yes. And really just finding the gratitude in that. Finding the gratitude and really being discerning of your audience. Sometimes you do have to change your path a little bit. Like, stop trying to stand in front of the people that are not listening and go to the people that are. Mm -hmm. Flowers Facts. can't flourish. Hey. You still got weeds growing. Right. Absolutely. So you just can't. So I, 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 in my head, a lot of times now it's support. You know, and me and my sister talk about this all the time. I'll say, like, we... Even in our, our our regular business, we have we we are housed in Hamden, but we have clients from New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Vermont. Wow! So and and all the time, I'm like, why did you come here? It's almost like I second my here? own ability. Like, <laughs> who what sent you? Made you come here? Right. You know, like it. Yeah. You had to drive two hours to get here, and you come every you know, week. You know, a similar thing happened to me uh, recently since I've gone uh, full entrepreneur um, just with, you know, 
all things my voice, whether it's the the poetry, music, voice acting. Right. Um, I've uh, refined some of the processes I've had or found ways that I can um, monetize some of my other uh, gifts and abilities. Yes. So me having a, a, a love for spoken word, uh, poetry and writing, um, I have listed on one of my uh, on my website uh, services for uh, creator services. So other people who are, you know, writers or poets um, and they want to kind of like, you know, basically have a think tank right. session with me. Okay. So they can book an hour virtual session with me or, you know, if they're local to the area uh, for an hour, we can simply collaborate or, you know, they could basically pick my brain and I help them more piece together, whatever their work is. Yes. Like, you know, so if they have an idea or they're like hitting a, like a, a, you know, stumbling block, anything yeah, creative, they can pick my brain. Yes. I can offer some ideas or suggestions. Yep. And you just, you know, you, you book this hour think tank. So I had it there for a while as a service, like, you know, I was promoting it, uh, you know, didn't seem like anybody was really interested in it. And then about um, like a month ago now, um, I get like, you know, a a booking alert, right. Mm -hmm. For this like think tank. And, uh, long story short, it's, uh, and I'm thinking like, you know, this is probably someone from the local area who's maybe seen me at event, you know, maybe. Um, and it turns out it's, it was somebody who just had came across my like f- social media page on Facebook and was all the way from Maryland right? and was just like, Hey, I came across you, you know, you look like, you know, you've done some cool things and might be able to help me. I'm kind of right. at the beginning stages of my, okay. you know, poetic, you know, yes. journey, whatever. Um, and it was amazing. Mm-hmm. And, and I couldn't help, but ask the question, like you said, was pondering you, like when these people come right. is like before our, our, you know, zoom session ended, I was like, Hey, just like real quick, just out of curiosity, because this is like really bugging me out. Right. Like, how did you come across me? Or like, right. where did, like, right. how do you even know who I am? Right. And there's people that you know are in your local area right. who could benefit from what you're offering. And you don't hear from those people. Right. But I don't need to because I'm I'm getting the support, the affirmation, yes. the, the, the head nods, whatever it is, mm-hmm. I'm getting it. Yes. From where God has it, it planned for me to, to get it. That's right. And sometimes your inner circle has like this entitlement perspective when it comes to your gift. True. Like, wow. like they've yeah. been around you for so long. Yes. It's almost like I'm entitled to this service yeah. or yes. to your wisdom or yes. like, yes. what do you yeah. mean charge me for? <laughs> right. What do you mean treat me like a, a client? Uh, what? Huh? We're friends. Right. And it's Yo. just like. That's true too. I, that's, that, I, but you, you know, know what? I, but I think that's the great thing about being connected or having at least a part of your inner circle, other creatives, because mm-hmm. I think those are the people, if they are in your inner circle, other creatives, Yes. those are the people who have the highest likelihood to still be around when you maneuver right. those lives. Absolutely. Yes. So like, like, it remi- like when it comes to doing book publishing, Tanisha is, was the first person who I knew personally that published their own book. And so I don't know if you remember this, like yes, I, I picked your so. brain of yes. like a while back about like, just yes. what are some like ideas, like, you know, going about this different platforms. Yes, I picked their brain. And then I asked her, um, about, uh, editing services. Yes. And I remember you texting me and I remember asking you, Hey, like, so what do you charge for something like that? Like yes. if I, and, and, we're friends. I've known her for, you right. know, I could just be like, Hey, like me, yo, like, you know, hold me down. We, yeah. Like <laughs> when you come, when you come to do the, cook, you when you come to the cookout, yo, I'm gonna bring my, um, my book with, I've been working script. on just, you know, take right. a look at this book. Like when you, you got time, why are you getting the barbecue chicken? <laughs> exactly. You know? So, but it's like when you're one creator to another, you know, right. this very, yeah. Yes. You know, intimate, very serious and important to you thing, yeah. this yes. creative space in each other and you right. respect that so yes, that yeah. you go, I know it's value. Whether whether yeah. I'm around it or not, a lot or often, I know it's valuable. Right. Let and me you know what it. I'll say? I think that that's what it is. Like me having the perspective on the outside of a supporter mm-hmm. of a lot of friends that I know are these creatives. Mm-hmm. Sometimes if you're not necessarily around a person that you see, like have that experience of like seeing like they sacrifice time. Yes. They sacrifice family. Yep. They sacrifice so many things. Mm-hmm. So I am going to be that person who's just like hey how much no charge me full price right right. like because i know all the time that one it takes to even 
right. cut out time for something to yep. do this service. Like favor? No, I don't want no favor. Yeah, like, that's how I am too. I don't want a favor. A friend is a friend. When right. I'm coming to Dermalift, it's like, nah, girl, so what's the service? What right. you do? And I, I just feel like one, it's also healthy boundaries that's as true. well yes that's you know true. i think there should be some type of separation there right. when it comes to things like that and, and here's the thing too like you know understanding people's gift there's a lot that can go into it like you got a friend and offer a service for and then barter right um there was something yeah. so i'm right. a reiki, so i'm a reiki master right and and when i did my reiki class this was like in 2010 the woman that that attuned me the woman that trains me told me I said, how much should you charge for this service? And she said, you can charge whatever you want, but never, ever, ever do it for free. Now, me, I'm a person that will give for free if I feel a person yeah. needs it. And she said that there is always an energetic exchange in every transaction. Mm. So it doesn't matter what it is that you're charging or what you're doing, there's always yeah. energetic currency that is going back and yes. forth between people Absolutely. when they are exchanging products, services, goods, money, or whatever. Yeah. People tend to not take things as, um, they lose respect for things that you give for free. Absolutely. It's yeah. so weird that you could say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm giving a free seminar on how to write books and like five people, we'll four people up. will be there. Mm -hmm. And if you charge fifty dollars or one hundred and fifty dollars, now people twenty are, people. Are like, yeah, now you got twenty five, thirty people in the right. class. It's crazy how right. people lose value when yes. you lose value. Right. I exactly. heard somebody once say, um, "Word it this way," and I'm so upset. I can't think of who said this to give them credit because right. I believe in giving people credit mm -hmm. for their gems. Um, but if you're the cheapest, mm -hmm. they'll never expect you to to be the best. Right. And if you're the best, they don't expect you to be the cheapest. Right. right. Exactly. Right. Yo, that was the That's dopest exactly. yes. lie I've yes. heard all 2021. Exactly. Yes. And if you're the, the truth, if though. you're the cheapest, they don't expect you to be the, the best. best. Yes. And if you're the best, they don't expect you to be the cheapest. That and it is that is gospel. It, that should be in um, oh. Philippians. <laughs> That's where it should be. Okay. <laughs> Yo, that's <laughs> fire. Like, come on. She said it should be for Yo, before no, we wrap up, I before we wrap up, I need you to 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 let the people know. Um, shoot, from all over. I, like I was gonna say, let if you're in the local area, but she got people coming from all the way from Vermont, guys. Yeah. To Connecticut, but let people know about your brick and mortar. What you know, you do there, uh, you and your sister, um, and where they can find you. So I own, I co-own Dermalift CT um, with my sister, Tiffany Daniels. It is a body sculpting and contouring aesthetic business. We offer anything that can make the woman's body look and feel better. That's the bottom line. Okay. So if you have issues with skin, issues with your body, issues with anything, we can actually help that. But we also form a sisterhood. So we don't judge our clients. We don't laugh at our clients. We don't talk about our clients. We yes. literally create the safest space for you to come in and be able to be organic and authentic and, and let all of your insecurities leave them at the door and kind of like just let let us come in and fill your cup. Mm. Like that's really what it's all about. And I just have a love for women and women empowerment. Um, actually trained my sister and, and got her on board and she's a, a, an amazing business partner. Um, we're at 1776 Dixwell Avenue in Hamden, Connecticut. So that's our brick and mortar. And we have a booking site on Booksy, and you just go on Booksy and type in Dermalift CT, and you can, um, you know, make an appointment for anything. I mean, I, but that's the thing, Chris. You said something earlier, and you were like, um, you know, when you have so many things, it's like a that you're that you're gifted at, yeah. right? You and you have you kind of have your hand in everything. The one thing that I I try not to do is now I only do things that I love and believe in. For sure. Even yeah. if I'm great at it, yeah, I have let certain things kind of fall by the yeah. wayside. Like I'm great at dancing and I used to teach a dance class um, yeah. once a month for women to come out. Had to let that one go. Will I pick it up in the summer again? Maybe. Maybe. Sure. Why not? But I have to go where the, the true passions are. Yes. 
Yes. You know what I mean? And with mine, it's all women empowerment. So everything kind of lines up with that. My books are relational, it. but it's women's empowerment. Me yeah, teaching yeah. at the school uh, in the beauty industry, women empowerment. I mean, I, I've changed these young girls' lives. Yes. And there's nothing that... They, I can see people and realize, like, oh, my God, she's who she is now, and I took part in that. So there's, like, there's no payback. There's nothing that yeah. you could pay me that can actually measure yeah. up to what I feel like I'm actually giving out. You know what I'm saying? So it's just one of those things. It's one of those things. Just do what you love. Go where the passion is. Well, you heard it. Uh, do what you love. Go where the passion is. I was getting ready to wrap up our show with how I usually do, y'all. It's free food for your soul, free mm -hmm. lunch here. So we got to leave the audience with something edible for their soul to remember. She just, she just dropped, she just dropped that one for you. She's just been dropping. She's been dropping them. She's been dropping like, them the whole episode. I Hopefully, feel, I you, feel like you catch this whole episode. My apologies of work, for pro probably being a sucky co-host because I've been sitting here the whole time just like she's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Isis, I love exactly. you. Remember that quote. Exactly. Just, yeah, that's but it. be sure we'll have in the description of the this episode um the the link where, you know, if you are in the area you're looking for all things woman beautiful mm. and could visit the brick and mortar, we'll have the link in there in this description where you guys could uh where they can book. Yeah, absolutely. Um and uh hey, tell them free lunch sent you free lunch absolutely um i don't know sweetheart do you have uh you know a uh, a uh, a takeaway you want the audience to remember from from today's session something edible for the soul yeah i think uh what i mentioned before which is everyone is not your audience and that's okay find where you fit that's okay wow. find where you fit and if you don't think you're dope why would anybody think else think you're dope, dope? yes you Come have on. to think you're dope first i think i think my my free food for the soul today would be uh, along the same lines. Um, let the flame burn from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Yo, it's Freestyle Gospel, a.k.a. The Real Free. And this is free lunch, free food for your soul. Peace.